Human trafficking is modern day slavery. We all know what slavery is, but most of us think that it ended a number of years ago. The person who is enslaved is treated as an object for another's benefit. You're forcing someone to do something that is totally against their will, and they're exploited in the process. Traffickers prey on the most vulnerable people in our communities and force them into servitude. For young people to be lured to the United States, maybe with the protest of helping them have a better life, but only to be used as child laborers or maybe sex laborers, that is very dehumanizing. Their God-given human dignity is either ignored or forgotten. Mary Ann Ataman, a Filipina, was lured to the United States by a job offer to serve as a nanny with a good salary. Well, that turned out to be a horrible lie. When I came here, it's not only just to take care of the children. I'll do all the household chores, cleaning, washing clothes, um, ironing, everything. I work mostly 10 to 12 hours, sometimes more than that if it is some um, holiday. I never had a day off. It's like I'm in prison because they don't allow me to go outside by myself. Most trafficking victims are held there against their will, often by use of fear. There are a lot of threats made against a victim, against their safety or their family's safety. In my contract, it says there I, uh, they're supposed to pay me 1700 for a month, but it didn't happen. They paid me $200 a month because she told me and she, uh, she paid all the expenses to come here. Mary Ann's employers decided to send her home, dropping her off at the airport with only $20 for the return trip. My employer's husband, he told me if I don't uh, go home, and um, they, the, the immigration, they will handcuff me and then they will put me in prison. I didn't go inside the plane. That's uh, I asked help to the people. Stories like Marianne's are all too common. Through the Amistad movement, Migration and Refugee Services works to educate local communities on how to identify, empower, and seek justice for victims of trafficking. We named our movement after the Amistad. The My goal is to learn more about how you can detect who is a slave or who had been trafficked. A lot of trafficking victims are here without documentation. I would like to know what should be done to bring justice and freedom to those people. Victims work in hotels, salons, on farms, and in our neighborhoods. MRS works with community groups, Catholic, and human rights organizations to advocate on their behalf. For the past 13 years, we've partnered with MRS in the anti-trafficking campaign, but also their immigration campaign. The way we understand mission is about being in relationship. And so for us, advocacy is about being in relationship with policymakers like U.S. Congress, the administration, international organizations. And so when we talk to policymakers, what we do is we bring the human story the lived experience of migrants or people that have been trafficked. There's a diversity of nationalities among trafficking victims. It's very important that we utilize those communities as a place to um, help disseminate this information and empower people. That person has decided to put them into some form of slavery. We created the Amistad Movement as a peer training course for new immigrants to understand all of the issues that play into trafficking and to make sure that they spread that word through their community, to make sure that they're safe and their friends and family are safe. Well, a piece of scripture that comes to my mind is John 10, when Jesus talks about we're all called to the fullness of life. It's our responsibility as people of faith, as children of God, to respond to that and work for policies that lift people out of the shadows and bring them into the fullness of life.